Welcome to today's Pastor's Perspective. I'm Ken Gray, serving here at Calvary Life Family Worship Center in Cheshire, Connecticut. Today our devotion continues in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 15, beginning with verse 25. Now we've been going back and forth looking at the kings in the north and the kings in the south. It kind of switches back and forth throughout the book of 1 Kings, but Kings focuses more on the northern uh, Israel, northern nation of Israel than on the southern nation. There, there are certain facts, but Chronicles will focus on that a little bit later. Let me begin reading with verse 25. Now Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, became king over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel two years. I, I want to just jump in here for a minute and just remind you that Nadab, son of Jeroboam, reigned only two years. Let's listen now to the rest of the verses. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in his sin which he made Israel sin. Then Basha the son of Ahijah of the house of Issachar conspired against him and Basha struck him down at Gibbethon which belongs to the Philistines while Nadab and all Israel were laying siege to Gibbethon. So Basha killed him in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. It came about as soon as he was king, he struck down the household, all the household of Jeroboam. He did not leave to Jeroboam any persons alive until he had destroyed them, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Ahijah the Shil Shilonite. And because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned, and which he made Israel sin because of the provocation with which he provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. Now I read that entire passage because you see the reasoning and the sequence of events that are attributed basically to the Lord. The demise of Nadab after just two years through an uprising of another man named Basha in a time of war, you might say a time of weakness, resulted not only in his death, but Basha annihilated his family. He annihilated them because there had come a word from a prophet that, would, that said because Jeroboam had created a religion of compromise and convenience that was rooted in his insecurity, and he was trying to secure himself in a place as king and not lose people to the south, he had disobeyed God in a way that not only caused him to sin, but caused the entire nation to sin. You see, God is quite merciful when we sin against him. But when we begin, as, especially as leaders, to create religious systems that are filled with compromise and convenience because of our insecurities as a leader, we make adjustments, we make compromises because we don't want to lose the people. God is then greatly provoked to anger and eliminates Jeroboam's legacy completely. We need to learn that valuable lesson from this passage of Scripture because after Jer Jeroboam had sinned in this way, not only himself involving himself, but the entire nation in a false religion, he, was so, uh, ang he had so angered God that God uh, said he would not have a legacy. The sad thing is he had put in a pattern, a pattern in place in the nation of Israel that would never be removed to the demise of the nation eventually in the north. It's so important for us to understand that while God is merciful to us as sinners, if we take and try to secure our positions of place in places of power in our insecurity, we will not have a future we will not have a future legacy and a long-lasting legacy. And we need to understand that our leadership is not given for, for us to have a place of power, to have a position, to have a place of comfort. It is so that we might serve God's purposes and serve God's people in God's way. Let me pray with you about this. Father, we pray that we would learn from the mistake of Jeroboam and his son Nadab that we would not, Lord, engage in any kind of compromise due to our own insecurities and fears. 
but we would stay focused on who you are in your greatness, stay focused on your purpose, that we are have positions of leadership, not for our own selves and for our own comfort or recognition, but we have these places and positions, uh, Lord, so that we might lead your people in truth and in righteousness and to worship God in spirit and in truth. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Well, thank you for listening to today's Pastor's Perspective. Uh, we understand that today is the 4th of July, and we pray that you are having a great celebration. And we will not have another one this week, but we look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless you, and have a wonderful week.